I just want to check the model. The idea is that we have the game. So this is in our studio. Tidy football data one has all the matches. So there, there have been 70 games so far in the Premier League. This is the 2017-18 season. So we have the... There have been 70 games in the Premier League so far. This is the English Premier League 2017-18 season. So I've put the last 20 games into a variable called test games and the first 50 games into train games. These include the betting odds. So what I want to do is train a model using the train games data. So you can imagine that this is week five. We've had 50 games played. We don't know what's going to happen in week six in week seven. So we train our model, which I'm calling my model. It's trying to find the full time result and the only variables that it has are the odds from Bet365. So this is the odds for a home win, a draw and, a, and an away win. And that's not right. That's training using temp. I wanted to I wanted to train using train games. So now we have our model. Then I'm going to try and make predictions. So here, it's using my model, which we just created. So that's the best model it could come up, or it could come up with after 50 games. So I'm using that model and I'm, and I'm applying it to test games. So that's game 51 to 70. So when it's looking at these games, it's, it has no idea what's going to happen. Um, my, my model was trained only using game 1 to 50. Next, we compare. We look to see what actually happened and what did we predict. So ideally, we want the prediction to be perfectly right. That this magical system was, on the basis of the first 50 games, able to figure out what happened in the next 20. This is what we get. So remember the train games, or not the test games, were game 51 to 70. So there are 20 games that we try to predict. And here we can see that in five of the games, we predicted that the away team were going to win and the away team won. So, great. 
though there were two games where we predicted that it was going to be an away win, while actually it ended up being a draw and a home win. Here we have four times where we predicted that it was going to be a draw, but the home team won. And there were three games where we predicted it was going to be a home win, and it was a home win, but there were six times where that wasn't the case. So where we predicted it was going to be a home win, but it ended up being a draw or an away win. So the accuracy is 40%. It isn't that easy because essentially you normally get a home win so the easiest thing would be to just predict home win all the time this has gotten five away wins correct and typically you get good odds for an away win so we can't just from this tell whether um, this is going to be profitable, whether, whether we can use this for betting. One of, yeah, one of the metrics that try to capture how well a model is doing is kappa. And that's only 0 0.06. So I would want I would ideally like Kappa to more be 0 0.4, 0 0.3 or 0.4, higher than that. So this doesn't look great. I mean, if I, if I were just given these numbers, I wouldn't proceed to, I wouldn't be very encouraged to use this model to bet. Since it's it's largely randomish it's 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 not um great but again that's only with 50 games worth of data maybe after 100 games it starts getting better and better we don't know so what i'm going to do next is Compare the Poisson model with this kind of model. By that I mean, we can just create a model like we have here. I'll just um, produce a plot so that we can see what it looks like. So this is the model that it developed on the basis of the first five weeks while the model that we had in the previous video was fit to the first seven weeks so that should uh, that has more information and so that should hopefully be better but this odds or this model basically looking at it and going okay if the odds for a home win are greater than or equal to 2.8. Most likely the away team's gonna win. If it's less than 2.8, then we split it like this. If the probability or the odds for a home win are less than 1.3, then we expect a draw, that's strange, because, you know, if the odds are very low, the market thinks that the home team is gonna win. So, this is unusual. I suppose this was affected by the fact that in the first week, wasn't it, uh, Burnley 
beat Chelsea. So Chelsea would have had odds of 1.1 or 1.2 to win at home. Because Burnley last year had an incredible home record, but were awful away. So the market, quite right, rightly, would have expected um, Chelsea to comfortably win. Um, but that didn't end up a draw. That that ended up a an away win. So um, I think Spurs as well. They didn't have a, a good results. Whatever it is, the looking at the first fifty games, this is the best fit that it could find. Hmm. So, n- next, I want to look at a series of matches, apply the Poisson model to try and forecast what I expect to happen, and apply this kind of model. So, looking at the betting odds. The attraction of the betting odds is that it uses uh, forward-looking indicators. If I'm using, say, the Poisson model, I'm just looking at the average number of goals scored historically. So, the only parameters that the model has are backward-looking figures, historical data. So that means that, say, Mane got injured. That's not reflected in the data. If I look at Liverpool and I use the average number of goals scored by Liverpool at home, that's the average number of goals scored by Liverpool at home. But that doesn't take into account, those in those games, Mane was involved. And important. So, is are they relevant when I try and predict what's going to happen against Liverpool or against Man United? At the same time, in those matches, um, a lot of them uh, Coutinho didn't play. So, actually, tomorrow Coutinho is going to play, and that should affect Liverpool's uh, performance. But that, that's nowhere in the data which we use in the Poisson model. So how reliable is that? Whilst in the betting odds model, like this, that is taken into account. The moment news broke that Mane was going to miss the game, the odds would adjust. The minute that it became clear that Coutinho was staying at Liverpool, those odds would change. So, in this kind of model, it's far more realistic. I mean, the that price ha- takes everything into account. And so, it is in that. I mean, that is the big advantage that the betting odds has over whatever model we try and uh, construct ourselves. But we'll see. So in the next few games, again, I suppose normally I look at, say, five games just to kind of get a sense because, you know, you, you might get two or three games and do very well, but that could have just been lucky. But if you have five games... You'll have a few where you'll do very well and a few where you won't. So so you get a more fair reflection of how it does. So, fingers crossed.